Uh, hey, so what's up guys? So I've been praying a lot about a recent prayer topic and really wrestling with the Lord and the Lord's recently just revealed something to me that I want to share with you guys. So the very night that I posted that video on fasting for three days for anybody commenting on this on the video, I had shared a passage, Second Chronicles chapter 20. And one of the prayers that I've been praying for is a uh, for a, a particular girl that I used to like and this girl that I had my heart set on uh, uh, for a while it didn't respond in the way that I thought would respond meaning to to like me back and so I've been wrestling a lot with the Lord and, and many nights many mornings just really asking him for discernment and prayer because the person's been on my heart for a long time and Obviously, the clear answer is to just kind of move move on if somebody doesn't like you back. And the problem that I had was that really, even though I've been rejecting and rejecting this person, even in my heart for quite some time, she comes up from time to time. And so the very night that I posted that video, I was just like wrestling so hard with the Lord and just saying, Father, like, uh, you know, similar to if you ever read Psalm 55, David, his prayer when his enemies were tormenting him and his prayer and plea for the Lord was just that he isn't able to uh, just, there's there's so much emotion and feeling built up in him that he he's just so open to the Lord. And one of the ways that the Bible teaches us to pray is just to be sincere and to be honest with the Lord. You don't have to pray in a way that just is all proper and professional and things like that, but really to come before him vulnerably and to really even shout and just let your feelings out, right? And similar to how David was just really pressing into the Lord and saying that he is, you know, overwhelmed and that even even saying things like, Lord, I, uh, you, if there was destruction that you could put uh, upon my enemies, I would I would want that. And just being completely honest in that way and again the lord can or cannot answer these prayers even if it sounds so juvenile in some some ways but that night i was really praying and wrestling with the lord and saying father if it is your will that i you know wait or if i you know whatever it is that you want me to do, do father i just want to do your will your way and if it's this girl or if it's another girl I'm happy to pursue whoever you want me to pursue, but I don't want to wait and I don't want to do anything that's not for me. And so, you know, really that evening, I, as I was just um, just wrestling with him and just saying, Father, I just I want to know and I need to know, you know, I need to know. And, you know, even in those prayers, I'm, you know, it's it's an honest prayer, but it's also a prayer that obviously is a little bit childish where you're saying, Lord, I, I need to know this. But do you really need to know? And is it something that you need an answer for? Yes and no, right? But for me, that evening, I was just so pent up with such um, feelings and just uh, even frustration, just asking the Lord, what is it that you want me to do? Because the posture that I have is to submit to you and to pursue you and do what you would want me to do. And so if it's not this person, if it is not the way that you want me to go, confirm and just validate for me and i was just praying that even as i was like laying in bed just praying that and again i don't have these prayers every night but time to time when i have these thoughts or these concerns that come up i will have this kind of a night as i'm wrestling with the lord and so sure enough you know i go to bed and i have a very vivid dream and I'm, i want to share this dream with you and and the hopes that it's an encouraging uh, message, but essentially the Lord was truly speaking to me and uh, and and I'll just share the dream. But so <clears throat> I was in um, a, I guess, sort of a military kind of base or, or a clearing ground where before we got to the military base, I was kind of in this place where you kind of let you basically sign up, I guess, for the military or you kind of let all your possessions go and you kind of transition your life in submitting to whatever the military has and, and would want you to do. And so I remember just getting rid of stuff and transitioning. And the dream really started when I was leaving everything behind and then getting on this bus. And I was getting on what looked like kind of like, a, you know, one of those military like school buses. 
And I was on this bus and I know and I knew that I was on my way to some kind of a military training camp. And as I was riding this bus, you know, I was like looking at scenery and I was just kind of traveling. And the crux of the dream is just really on this bus where I knew and I was thinking about all the things that I had to let go and that I had to move on from. And then all the things that potentially could happen as I move into a career with, within the military. And again, I'm not in the military or I don't have anything or aspirations of such in real life. But in the dream, I it felt so at peace and just ready to pursue this, this life. And as I was going, I remember thinking to myself and as I was kind of looking out the window and kind of just getting excited for what's to come, I was thinking, oh man, I need to know where I'm going. I need to know what is next. And so I remember taking it's like both my phone and I guess like my watch or something out. And I just kind of opened up the map, the map app and just kind of scrolled and just, you know, how in like a GPS thing, you can see where you started and kind of where, where you're going. And so I remember just looking at it and I was like halfway to my destination. And it was so vivid and real that I, that God was using an example of. So so where I live, like very north of me, there's a an actual military base. I'm not sure, maybe like 20 miles north of where I live, kind of along the lake. And it's a very big military base that I think trains. I'm not sure if it's like the Marines or something, but it's a training ground where people come, they fly in or they come from the city and they get shuttled up there. And so I, I knew immediately what that was. And I knew that where, even though I hadn't seen the base or I hadn't gone there, I knew where I was going and I knew what was ahead of me, which was basic training and more advanced training or whatever it is that you would do in the military. And so I was looking at this map and I was just thinking, man, like I know exactly where I'm going. And it was such a high tech, I can't even explain it. It's such a high tech GPS system that I was like, it was like one of those like sci-fi things where it like pops up and it just like shows little things and just kind of stats and like where you're kind of going next and stuff. And so I was just like, wow, it's pretty cool that this phone or this watch or whatever kind of like pops up and has this like crazy like stuff. And so I remember just looking at it and I remember specifically in the dream, just thinking, man, all I want to know and all I need to know is where I'm going next. And I don't want to know and really understand anything else, any of the other details, but I just want to know what was next for me and that I could prepare for that next step. And so what the Lord was giving me was all of that detail, like, oh, you're going to go to this base, you're going to be here, your distance is now this, and your estimated time remaining is this and all of that. And so I felt very content and I just like put my phone away and just kind of sat back and just kind of relaxed on my trip there. And that's when I just woke up. And so, and immediately I woke up and I knew, Lord, you, you answered me and you spoke to me that very night. And so um, <clears throat> what the Lord gave me and just kind of overwhelmed me with was a sense of peace and just a very, just um, encouraging kind of word. And he gave me a couple of passages, but one I want to share is Psalm 37, verse 23, and it says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. And what the Lord was really convicting and just answering me that evening or that morning when, when I was wrestling with him was, all you have to do is just stand firm, just live out your calling. And similar to even that passage that I was reading, 2 Chronicles 20, it says the battle is not yours. And in fact, all you have to do is stand firm and watch. And for me, all I have to do is just follow the calling that I have. And I just have to just be faithful in that. And I just have to delight in him and delight in the path that he has for me. And just because of that, he'll establish my steps and he'll direct my ways. And I don't have to worry about any of this other stuff, like who it is I'm going to marry, who it is that if it's this girl, if she's going to like me back or any of these other things. But really, it's just that I need to be faithful and I need to stand firm in what God's already given me and what he's already called me to do and that I should just be faithful in that. And some of you that are listening are struggling with that as well. You want to know and you just want to understand like what it is that is all this and really if anything it's a distraction and it's such a hindrance sometimes to 
your walk that you get sidetracked and you just get overwhelmed by worry and you get overwhelmed by thoughts that really may not necessarily be needed. And though you are honest and you want to pray those things and, and cast it onto him, and even Psalm 55, it's talking about how David is casting these things onto the Lord and how he's really in anguish and in just burden. And so in all those ways, the Lord is was convicting me and just giving me peace and also just as a word of encouragement saying to me and to you guys too that are going through similar things that you just have to stand firm and just pursue him and put him first and just walk in this direction and eventually if it is a, a girl or something else or if it's another prayer request or whatever it'll come along and you will just be moving in the same direction but the worst that you can do is move in the sideways direction or in the opposite direction. And that's where distractions and other things that's going to hinder you will stop you from doing that. And so for me, I felt such a peace waking up and just saying, Father, even though I'm getting older and older by the minute, and even though I'm, you know, mar not married or anything like that, you have a plan for me and you have something that is such it, it's so greater than anything I could ever imagine. And that's um, that answer was all that I needed. I didn't have to know whether she was going to like me or not, or if I just, you know, I, and again, I'm completely moving on or I'm, I'm doing other things in my life, but I don't have to wait on this or I can open myself up to this or whatever it is. But the first thing I have to do is just delight in him and delight in his way and just be able to pursue and just keep him close to me. And so, just want to encourage you guys with that and I just pray and as I'm just in this season right now of just really pursuing and praying for you guys as well as praying for myself in different ways and wrestling with him that whether the Lord answers you or whether the Lord is encouraging you with even messages from scripture or, or these things all you've got to do is delight in him and he will establish your steps and if you stand firm the battle is not yours and he will fight it for you and so just want to encourage you guys with that uh, God bless you and we'll talk to you guys soon.